Well, thank you for coming. Again, my name is Yoni Binstock. I'm the CTO at Atomic Digital Design. We are an AR creative agency based in Paris. Today, I am so excited to talk to you about augmented reality portals, bringing magic through your phone. So before we begin even, what is an augmented reality portal? Throughout this presentation, I'll be focused primarily on mobile AR. And often, you have an AR experience that activates a digital doorway. And by passing through the doorway, you are fully immersed 360 degrees in a digital environment. So using tools like occlusion, 360, 3D elements, you become immersed in a really magical place. For me, this interest started when I was a kid. I watched a TV show called Stargate SG-1. And for those of you who are familiar, the premise was the protagonist of the story in every episode would walk through this doorway and would step into new worlds across the universe. So no need for spacecraft or spaceships, just this magical doorway would bring you to new locations. And I think that stuck with me because now I have the possibility, we all have the possibility of creating these. Of course, we're not transporting people across the universe, but we are bringing them to uh, places full of fantasy or sci-fi or potentially a, a store. So this is what excites me most about augmented reality portals. Let's talk about a few use cases. The one that is most exciting to me is retail. Now, we've heard a lot about how COVID has influenced retail over the past few years. And even before COVID, stores were trying to figure out, okay, we know it's really hard to bring people to the store. How can we bring the store to people? And of course, 2D e-commerce websites have been convenient, but they're not creating memories. They're not creating lasting experiences. And so I think the future of retail is gonna include augmented reality portals. So what might this look like? Well. For example, a store maybe like Apple would want their 360 portal to look identical to all the rest of the retail stores spread across the world. But what I think is more interesting is when st stores and brands can get really creative. What if we throw the laws of gravity out the window? Forget about building codes, because they don't matter. What does a digital store look like in 3D and 360? I think this can be really interesting. So hotels and resorts, a lot of their marketing campaign, a lot of marketing material has to do about getting the potential customer to imagine what it's like being at their location. And so a portal for a hotel or resort, you might step through and you might be in the hotel lobby or in the room or by the beach or using the amenities. And so it's all about you know, helping a, a marketing campaign, imagine the user, you know, what it's like to be at this hotel, at this resort, and then going on to book a room. So a few weeks ago, I got a, a pamphlet in the mail telling me to come to the local zoo. And I was thinking, you know, how can augmented reality portals be part of this you know, marketing effort? Well, you can imagine a QR code or a snap code that once activated shows you a digital doorway. And when stepping through, maybe you're in the savanna and you can hear the sounds of the savanna, and you look up and there's a giant giraffe and you can read more about it. And at the end of the experience, it says, well, come to the zoo you know, to, see the, to see the real thing. Our museum might be opening up a new wing or a new exhibition and you step in a portal and it's your, you find yourself in a prehistoric jungle and you can hear the dinosaurs and you can see a huge T-Rex and you can learn all about it and again it says, come to the museum, you know, see them for real, or at least see the fossils. I think entertainment, I think we're gonna see a lot of portals for the entertainment industry, for TV shows, movies, and video games. In fact, I think the first AR portal I ever saw was for Stranger Things, uh, the first season. And in that portal, you step inside, and you find yourself uh, in the main home, uh, the main sets, and you see kind of lights flashing, and you can hear the monster creeping about. And what it did, it made me feel that I was the main character, that I was part of the story. And I think video games and TV shows and movies are going to be keep on using this medium 
augmented reality portals to keep doing that, to get prospective viewers, prospective gamers, to step inside their worlds and have them imagine what it's like to inhabit them. So I wanna show you a few examples. Uh, a lot of these examples are ones that we've made at Atomic, and some of them are just other examples I found online that I really, really like. So these are four examples of, of different portals for retail. The one I wanna highlight is for Ralph Lauren. So a couple things about it. One is I think just aesthetically, it came out really, really cool. Secondly, the whole point of it was to teach the user about their new uh, water and energy savings. And what I think our developers and our 3D team did a really good job is creating these camera effects uh, to imagine what's like you know, being in the washing machine or getting dried. And the other thing that was really cool is you can see you could, there was a color wheel. And you could pick the color of a t-shirt and at the end of the experience you switched the camera, took a selfie, and the color that you picked was on your shirt. And so all in all, it was just turned out to be a really great experience. But you can just see from the other examples that AR portal for retail can look and behave in a whole bunch of different ways. AR portals can do different things and tell different types of stories. Some por portals might focus on where the company is from or what industry they're in. Others might focus on the values and where they donate their money to. Another portal might focus on their specific art style that they've been known for. While others might focus on the value that their product, th that their service provides. For example, Lufthansa, the value of using them is not so much sitting in an airplane, <laughs> it's going to new cities, seeing new places. And that's what this portal is all about. Here are a few more examples. I really like the Microsoft one, because just when I stepped inside that portal, I could almost just hear the modem of my childhood just like ring, and it just, I got these you know, shivers because it just it, it meant so much to me. This, art, this style was kind of how I grew up in terms of being on a computer. I also have a, a baby daughter, and so these characters in the Pampers portal, is, I'm very familiar with. I see them you know, a whole bunch of times, a whole bunch of uh, every single day. And this Nike example, I think shows you that you know, corporations, these really big corporations, are pushing the boundaries of their artistic style and what's possible. So uh, for the next few slides, I wanna talk about what we've learned at Atomic in building these AR portals. The first thing is you have to move your butt. And what I mean by that is often a main characteristic of these portals is that you have to physically get up from your chair, take a few steps, go through a doorway and step inside of a new environment. The thing about that is really hard to tell users how to do that because it's the first time they're, they're having this digital experience that requires them to do this physical movement. And most people that go through an AR portal, it's usually their first time. So you need to be really, really explicit that the user needs to stand up and physically walk through the portal doorway. The one thing about that though is sometimes somebody just can't do that. Maybe they're on the metro. Maybe they're um, at a desk and there's just not the, the space to, to stand up and walk. Or for disability reasons, they can't get up. And so what we do at Atomic is we can detect, let's say between six or eight seconds, if the user hasn't crossed the doorway, we show them a button. And by pressing that button, the doorway comes to them, engulfs them, and they become surrounded by the environment and they can continue the experience. So I think it's really important to create that fallback, but I st still think it's really important to focus on that experience of physically crossing that threshold from the real world to the magical world. So I saw this uh, AR portal, I think about two years ago, sponsored by Pepsi, I was for the halftime show at the Super Bowl. So the, the portal was pretty interesting, um, but it was a pretty passive experience. The user kind of just looked left and right as the scene was changing all around them. And to be honest, I was a little disappointed. I'm like, oh my God, you know, millions of people are doing an AR portal. That's amazing, but it's like really passive. It's not interactive, not a lot of movement. And as I thought more about it though, actually I realized how well designed it was. 
Because if you can imagine, people who are watching the Super Bowl, potentially there's a lot of other people around them. Potentially they have uh, food and, and drinks in another hand or nearby. And maybe they don't want to look silly or goofy in front of their friends and family. And so creating this experience that doesn't require you to stand up, that everyone can just you know, look and not seem too silly, turned out to be a great design. And so when you're creating any AR experience, but I think especially AR portals, you really need to be aware of where your users might be. What happens if they're in bed or on a couch or at their office desk or in the metro? And kind of most importantly, what if they're in a public space where there's pedestrians nearby or potentially even traffic or ca and cars nearby? So you need to be really cautious and, and design with the location in mind of where these users are being activated. One thing we found is when a user walks through the portal, usually they would just stick out their phone and look straight ahead and not really move and not, not realize that there's a 360 scene all around them. And so it's really important to provide UI and UX elements to encourage the user to explore the space, to look up and down, left and right, all around. But I think what's even more interesting than just providing UI elements is providing 3D elements and animation to help the user uh, explore the space. One thing I personally like to do is use butterflies. The reason I like butterflies is one is the 3D team likes to create them because they're relatively simple, simple animations, and they're really beautiful. But the reason I like them is because I think just naturally, if any of us would see a butterfly, we're just gonna watch and see where it goes, right? Uh, we don't need to be told, follow the butterfly. And so this butterfly could you know, fly around the space and we'd be watching it and looking for it and just using our body, using our arm to, to follow the butterfly and look around the space. Obviously, you don't need to use a butterfly, but I would encourage you to use spatial audio and 3D animations to encourage the user to make sure that they're taking full advantage of the 360 environment. I think um, a lot of people spend a lot of time on the interior of the portal, which is really important. That's where the user is spending the majority of the time. But just as important is the actual doorway, the digital doorway. So a few things about that is I would really encourage you to make sure you have shadows on the doorway. So it increases the presence that, that this is like a real thing, that it exists in the real world. Secondly, you definitely want to add depth to it to make sure it has a volume that has, makes um, space so the user isn't feeling that they're walking through like a 2D plane, that they're actually walking through a three-dimensional doorway. And I think the best doorway that I can think of is the wardrobe into Narnia. So there are portals that can be three DOF, three degrees of freedom, or six DOF, six degrees of freedom. In a three DOF portal, you have rotation. So you look left and right, and you see different parts of the portal. With six DOF, you can actually walk around. And so the edges of the portal will get closer, and you can get closer to certain things, especially with spatial audio. Uh, you can hear things you know, getting louder as you get closer to this sound, and same thing over here. There's pros and cons to both. With 3 DOF, I would say it's much safer and simpler to create. Uh, you don't need to worry about a lot of potential bugs and hazards. But with 6 DOF, it definitely has this sense of presence that this is a real place, but you have like one real big issue, and that is tracking and drifting. Because what happens is if the user activates the portal, usually they're you know, using slam tracking, and that's fine, they get the uh, doorway situated. They walk through, and then they look around and they start to bring up their phone, and even higher, they look up at top. And what's happening, they've completely lost tracking. And then the portal starts to drift, and you lose comp you know, immersion absolutely, completely, 100%. And so, what we do is we try to have interesting elements on the horizon, so that the user is always looking so, you know, close to the floor, kind of like this. And that way, uh, tracking isn't lost and drifting doesn't happen. I think one thing that makes AR portals feel like a real place is dimensionality. So that's having foreground, middle ground, and background. 
background is the 360 environment. Uh, it's usually a 360 sky. And then the midground is 3D elements uh, that, that add to the scenery, add to the, to the environment that creates depth and, and perception. And the stuff in the foreground is usually the artifacts, the elements that the user is interacting with. They are things that within arm's reach. And by, by providing these different layers, by providing dimensionality to the portal, you're gonna create a place that feels real. So AR portals can be created either with social AR, so that is Snapchat, Instagram, and TikTok, or web AR, uh, Blipper, Zapper, or Eighth Wall. Um, I think the, the, the technology and the performance is pretty much the same on both. I think just the difference is gonna be in your target demographic and the campaign uh, goals. But I just wanted to let you know you can do AR portals in, in both these platforms. So uh, a, close, a close sibling of AR portals are AR windows. AR windows are really useful when you want to do um, with image trackers. So let's say on the exterior of a retail store, there's a QR code to activate the experience, and then an image, and you scan it, and then you can see inside this AR window. You can't walk through because there's a window. But you can, as you move left, as you move right, you can see different elements inside of this space. Now, a space could be really small or even bigger than kind of what the store would be. And it's not just looking inside the store. It could be you know, telling a story of how the products are, are made or uh, where they come from or how people are using it. It, it. it can be just as creative as AR portals. They're just not, you can't walk through them. You can only see inside of them. So there's this line, and on one end, you have very interactive experiences, and the other hand, you have something called, well, we call Rails experiences. Rails is kind of like this GIF, where it's kind of like a roller coaster, or a slow roller coaster, right, from Disney World, where the user is pretty passive, and just things are happening around them. And this is really useful when you want to tell stories, and you want to make sure that the user gets from point A to point Z. Interactive you know, is the user is interacting with 3D elements and maybe 2D elements throughout the scene. And maybe it's, there's game mechanics, uh, maybe there's a quiz. Just the point is the user is constantly interacting with the scene, and the scene isn't, much, isn't changing until the user does something. But you can have experiences that take a little bit from both, somewhere in between. So we've created a, a portal experience where it's kind of the combination of the two. So there would be this Rails experience, the person would be passive for about 20 seconds as a story was being told. And then at the end of the chapter, uh, the user would have to click on certain things and do certain things for the story to continue, to get to chapter two. And then there'd be another 15, 30 seconds of a passive of watching, of listening, and then some interaction. So you could definitely have some sort of balance between the two, between a Rails experience and an interactive experience. I think AR portals are a mini metaverse. And what I mean by that is that they're, they're solo, they're not connected to anything, and, but they're 360 degree environments that brands and companies are starting to build to tell their stories. I think getting into the metaverse is, or can be, expensive, complex, time consuming, you have to hire the right people. And it can just be this really daunting challenge. And so I think with AR portals, the, the risk and the cost are much lower, but you're really kind of doing the same thing. You're trying to figure out how do I tell my story in a 360 environment with 3D elements. Um, and I think you know, we're gonna see a lot of portals being created just as little try-ons or as you know, mini metaverses. I'll end saying that AR portals are connecting the immersion of virtual reality with the everyday use of smartphones to create something magical. Thank you so much for your time.
and I'll open up to any questions. Thank you, Yoni. And um, when you have questions, I'll bring the mic over, microphone over to you. So uh, here's the first one. Uh, thank you very much. It was super interesting. Uh, I have a question concerning um, technical challenges. So except for um, this tracking uh, drift, what is the biggest obstacle that you're facing right now? I would say the biggest obstacle is for both web AR and social AR is asset size. Right, uh, with social AR, usually there's hard limits. It could be eight megabytes. With web AR, there aren't these like hard limits, but obviously the more you put in, the slower the experience, the longer it takes to load. And I think once you start to like think about all the possibilities of what you want to do in this like 360 environment, your imagination can just go wild. So I want all these audios, I want all these videos, I want all these 3D models that are really high definition and really complex and doing all these animations. But then you realize, oh, <laughs> it's way too big. So you need, need to like really parse it down and reduce the size of your assets. So that, that's the other kind of technical challenge. Any other questions? No? All right, I thank have a you. For you. Um, you talked a lot about marketing in the, the um, retail space. Yeah, retail, yeah. Are you seeing uh, much uh, use of AR portals in other industries? Can you share anything inside on that? So, um, We've done them for training, uh, like soft skills training. Uh, a brand uh, used an AR portal to teach their new employees about that company, uh, about like their values and about like what's coming down the pipeline for that company. And it was just really cool because we could build these 360 scenes that told the company's story. You know, it's past, it's present, it's future. And we had um, a hologram um, kind of with a voiceover. And so it was just like really just immersive experience that anyone could utilize just using their smartphone. That's great. Well, thank you, Yoni. Um, great to have you on. Thank you.